it seems like every few months or so we start looking at what the nintendo switch has done or what it's doing and say how did it actually do that it's kind of doing the impossible we haven't seen a system do this before in the past and nintendo's kind of bucked all trends that people thought for them heading into the generation a number of years ago but one of those things has once again happened and the impossible is kind of happening right now with the nintendo switch and it's something that i haven't seen with any other nintendo system as long as i've been playing them and i've been playing nintendo systems since the original nes and even with the game and watch and some of the stuff before that but basically i've been playing since nintendo decided to get into the console making business where you have the system you have the cartridge or the disc and you put it inside and you play and honestly i've never seen a system go this strong this late into its life because we're looking at the most recent famitsu sales and it's showing that nintendo isn't really slowing down too much or at least what you'd expect from a system going into its eighth year completed its seventh going into its eighth year so we're going to talk about that plus we also have some big information and details on shin megami tensei 5 vengeance this game is truly going to be special and we also have an end of an era when it comes down to the nintendo 3ds but before we get into all that what's good everyone oj here welcome back to another video please make sure you hit that like button subscribe if you are someone new and click that notification bell to get my videos first and let's go ahead and jump right into it here with the famitsu sales the nintendo switch and the most important details with this this was for april 1st 2024 through april 7th 2024 famitsu only covers the software retail sales does not cover the digital sales but essentially we're going to be taking a look at the actual numbers for the nintendo switch and the fact that yes it's past its seventh year going into its eighth year and it still somehow managed to sell another seventy-one thousand nine hundred. 142 units without any type of new software or any type of new system model or anything so it begs the question what is going on how is it doing something that you would never see we did not see that with the nintendo 3ds we did not see that with the playstation 2 we did not see that with the nintendo ds a lot of these systems that have been some of the best selling or better selling systems in japan have not had the shelf life that the nintendo switch has been able to have we have princess peach showtime which is showing some pretty decent legs overall in Japan. The game sold another 19,612 units. So you can say, okay, that's helping out with things here. But if you look at the top 10 for the past week, you have nine Nintendo Switch titles, with many of them being first party published Nintendo Switch games from Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, which came out so many years ago at this point, Animal Crossing New Horizons, which is four years old, Nintendo Switch Sports, which is going on two years old, you've got Splatoon 3, which is going on two years old, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, which came out last year, and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, which essentially is the second best-selling game retail-wise in Japan with 13,000 units, and that game came out almost at the launch of the system. So essentially, it's the evergreen titles that are helping Nintendo continue to have this type of streak, which I think is going to be very important heading into the next generation as Nintendo for the first time ever that I can recall has true momentum heading into the next generation usually by the time that nintendo launches their next system they've flamed out when it comes to the nes to the super nintendo or when it comes to the super nintendo to the n64 or the n64 to the gamecube or the gamecube to the wii the wii to the wii u you can look back at pretty much every device that nintendo's had with the exception of maybe the gba the gba was still going pretty good once nintendo decided to introduce the nintendo ds even to the point where nintendo tried to tell us oh it's a third pillar it's a third pillar between GameCube and DS and GBA, but we all knew that they were just moving on to the DS, but they weren't sure. They didn't know 100% if it was going to be successful because of the dual screens, but that's beside the point. The point is is that Nintendo usually flames out with their systems or their devices by the time that the next system comes. The biggest one that I saw was the Nintendo Wii, where the Nintendo Wii was pretty much essentially done in 2010, but then it took another two years plus or so to get the Nintendo Wii U out. So there was a long waiting period of just people like, okay, what is there to play? Or yeah, there's some games here and there, but nobody's buying this system. Whereas with the Nintendo Switch, the system sales are still strong. It's still selling well above 
the Xbox Series system, and that system's far newer. And yes, the PlayStation 5 overall worldwide is definitely selling better and above it, but it's not like it's to the point to where the Nintendo Switch isn't respectable based on how old the system is. The system is going on its eighth year, yet it's still able to sell 70,000 units plus in Japan with no new software out. So you have a lot of people that are probably getting it as their first gaming device or they're buying it with their own money. Maybe they didn't have the money when they were younger when it first came out, but now at this point, they have a job, they can pick it up, and they always wanted one. Maybe they played their brothers or their cousins, or maybe they just couldn't get one, and they're finally getting into it, and that's why these games like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Splatoon 3, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, Animal Crossing, a lot of these evergreen games that have been out for years now are being picked up recently because people are finally able to get them when it comes to their own money or just buying the system themselves so a lot of people were kids when the switch came out and maybe they just couldn't afford it but are getting it not at this point i remember buying a ps1 years and years after it came out when i could finally afford to buy it myself or even some of the other systems as well so i think some of that is happening right now if you're wondering how this impossible task is happening with the nintendo switch so i think it's interesting it's fun to see that the Switch is still going kind of strong, and I think that it's going to set Nintendo up quite nicely when they transition over to Nintendo Switch 2, when they announce it maybe this year at some point, or maybe they even announce it early next year, but I'm pretty sure they're going to announce the Nintendo Switch 2 or whatever the next system is later this year, and then it's going to launch maybe first half of 2025. Moving on to the next topic, I want to discuss Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance. We got a bunch of new screenshots and information about the game, and the biggest things that I want to focus on is, one, you will be able to go to the dorm room in this game. That's something that I didn't know beforehand, even though I made a everything you need to know about Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance, there is still a bit more. But if you want to get the full overview of exactly what this game is about, make sure you check out that video. It will be linked in the description below. But yes, I do like the fact that they're adding in some pretty cool things here. I love the fact that we are going to be able to go into the dorm rooms and kind of have a little bit more of that personalized experience that was somewhat missing from Shin Megami Tensei 5, at least the base vanilla version of the game. Now, for those who don't know, Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance is essentially a new game packed into the previous game. So if you want to play the vanilla SMT5 experience that released back in 2021, you can do so. You can do so on any of the platforms because it's going to be on everything. However, if you want to get the new experience with all of the new demons, with all of the upgrades, with all of the different things that they've added in to essentially turn this into a brand new game, you're going to want to play the new path that you'll be able to clearly pick from from the beginning now it's pretty cool because they're showing off some of the different demons and what they can do and some of the battle skills and the new Nahobino form which that's what I kind of want to talk about a bit more here is that and some other cool features as well the new render I mean we've known about this new form but we've got an actual render from them so people have commented on okay hold up they cut off the defining hair and some of the other things but I think that you wanted to make sure that the form looked different if you're going to do a new form of Nahobino and give him different types of weapons and all of that you definitely want to make sure that it looks different enough from the base form you don't want to have a super saiyan to super saiyan 2 type of situation right so i do think that it makes sense that they cut the hair off they kind of gave different type of blades and the outfit the patterns and all that definitely look very different now not everybody loves the new render but i do think that it's going to grow on you once you play the game and you start understanding and seeing nahobino's powers more and kind of why that even happens in the first place because they haven't actually told us what's going on because you still play as the original nahobino form as well so something definitely happens to where that activates or you can switch or something. So that's going to be super cool to see exactly how that plays out. Now we have a ton of new screenshots as well. The game looks better than ever. And we do have confirmation that the game will run at 4K 60 plus frames per second based on your rig if you're running this game on the PC. Now we don't have confirmation on exactly what they're going to do with the Xbox One or the Xbox Series S, Xbox Series X, the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 4 Pro, PlayStation 5. We don't 
don't know the resolution and frame rates yet and we don't know if they've even improved what happened in the switch version of the game which had frame dips below 30 frames at times so we're gonna have to wait for that i'm pretty sure we'll get some information closer to launch but overall it should be a solid experience based on whatever platform you decide to be planning on i'm hoping the ps5 version maybe can do 4k 60 but i don't know probably not but either way i'll be picking up potentially multiple versions of this game overall i'll probably get a switch version keep it sealed I'll have a PS5 version. I might even get a PC version as well, just because that's how much I love SMT5 Vengeance. And I'm pretty sure Atlas will probably give me a review copy and stuff. So I'll probably get one of those at least, you know, overall. But yeah, there is a new feature here too. Shout out to Midori, who's been covering this as well. They talked about the top-down view, which has been added, allowing for easier discovery of items and other landmarks in Da'at. And this is one of the things that was very frustrating with the original game was navigating like broken buildings and certain ways to get the building sometimes you can jump up sometimes you couldn't sometimes you had to go around and find like a ramp that was connected to it sometimes there was whatever like it was very confusing at times so they have pretty much fixed that and i love the overhead view so you can clearly see where you need to go next and what's happening and everything so i love that about it and that's just at the beginning area and in addition to that they also highlighted the fact that you will be able to have human characters in your party that you can control and they can use their demons that they have and their own abilities as guest characters in your party that is a huge step up for people because some people were saying okay smt it's known for having demons in your party and all that but it would have been nice to have a bit more human interaction a bit more stories talking like that you can't really talk to the demons too much in terms of them being part of the story since there's so many but now that you actually have these main characters that are going to have more defined roles and even brand new characters added in as well to help aid the plot it's going to help out with one of the biggest flaws with the game so very excited about Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance I think that this game is going to be awesome and it's going to review much better than the original SMT which I think has about an 84 or so on Metacritic I think it's going to review a lot higher than that and people are going to enjoy it quite a bit with all of these upgrades and additions coming but moving on to the next topic let's discuss the dragon quest 7 situation on the nintendo 3ds the dlc maps and all this because this is something that i didn't know about but then i started seeing people talk about it and articles and everything and i wanted to go over it so the shutdown of the wii u and the nintendo 3ds there was one person that actually was able to go in there and preserve the dragon quest 7 dlc maps before all of the servers shut down and i'm surprised that somebody didn't do that beforehand so apparently this person's name is grania who is a passionate dragon quest enthusiast and content creator and it was tough apparently according to how she did it she needed to create a clean save file and a process that involved leveling up specific characters to 50 then progressing through the third island of the game and she did this and it took over 340 hours of dedication she made a youtube video so you guys can check that out i'll have a link in the description for that she said that she just felt like giving a little bit back to the community but yeah this was no small feat at all and i know that it's going to be upsetting for some because some people still play their 3ds i know it's not like a ton of people but a lot of people still play their 3ds and the fact that all this stuff wasn't preserved and put together and all of that to where people could easily get it beforehand that just goes to show you kind of like all digital and when they do this type of stuff when things go offline you don't know what's happening to that content so congrats to her for doing that and shout outs to the dragon quest community and if you still love dragon quest 7 and play it or want to access it there are ways to get to that content so good stuff there but speaking of the nintendo 3ds let's discuss the end of an era in japan because we talked about nintendo switch kind of dominating for the last number of years but the nintendo 3ds that was the system that dominated before the nintendo switch and that system sales are no longer being tracked in japan anymore it's a little bit of an end of an era so shout out to my man stealth over on twitter he stated that famitsu is no longer tracking 3ds sales in japan after 13 years now for the japanese hardware sales of all time it goes number one nintendo switch number two ds number three game boy slash game boy color and number four the nintendo 3ds so he says 3ds dominating japan for many years before the switch came along and that is true portable systems have always kind of dominated japan overall the nintendo switch is the first i would say home console slash hybrid platform to really break above 
all of these other ones and to be honest it's actually a bit more impressive to me with the nintendo switch because the nintendo switch was the most expensive out of all of these even with inflation you can still look at it the nintendo switch was definitely the most expensive one and most of the time people buy the nintendo switch oled so people are buying the most premium model people are not buying the nintendo switch Lite more than the switch oled so that's also pretty impressive overall but the 3ds had a good run number four is not bad at all it sold a lot of units there and it's a system that i think people will remember very fondly when it comes to what nintendo put out on the platform and even what japanese rpgs that we got there i know for me personally i love the fact that games like bravely default were birthed on the nintendo 3ds and so many other classic games so shout out to nintendo 3ds you had a good run but obviously nintendo switch has been here for the last number of years and uh, yeah, the 3DS is pretty much done. I don't know if Nintendo's ever going to go back to like the dual screen formula, but it was cool for its time for sure. But all right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this video here. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe if you are someone new. Click that notification bell and check out my other Nintendo Switch RPG videos and more right here on screen. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys for the next one. Peace.